Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. What's your name, bro? Oh, Brandis Banks. Get a liar. Nice to meet you, brother. Get a liar. I want to say something to you. The word Egypt, what does it mean? Well, that's what I was finna see what the right. standing of Egypt so, was. So the ancient word for Egypt is Mizraim. That's the Hebrew word for it. Okay. Mizraim. Mizraim means to bind or bondage. Okay. So right. when the Greeks took over, Alexander the Greek, mm -hmm. he put one of his generals over that land of Egypt, mm -hmm. right? His name was Ptolemy. Mm -hmm. The word Egypt is a Greek word. It means bondage or slavery. So when he said he'll send us into Egypt again, he's not speaking of the physical land of Egypt. Right. He's speaking of slavery okay. again. And that's why he mentioned about the dollar bill. Because the white the, the Lord said he would leave signs in the last days to show us who we are. Get that Deuteronomy 2846 real quick. I'm getting right back to you, so get right back to you. Keep it because I got another question. Okay. I'm gonna show, let me show you this then. All right. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 446. And they shall be upon thee. For a son. So the Lord said, the curses, mm -hmm. that would be the identifying marker of who his people were in the last days. Uh -huh. He said the curses would be on us as a sign. Read. And for a wonder. And for a wonder, because people will wonder why these particular people go through the things that they go through. Have you ever wondered that? Like, why do we deal, why do we go through the things we go through? Right? Read. And upon our seed forever. And we have children. There's something that they say in the black community called generational curses. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Happened to our granddaddy pass it down to us and we deal with the same repercussions that our forefathers dealt with since they've been in this country. The Bible says the same thing. That was because of our disobedience to God. Okay. Now Deuteronomy 28, 68, one more time. Bring Bible. it out. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God said as a sign to know who his people were in the last days, he allowed this to happen so that we can know who God's people were. We got it. Y'all got slave ships? No. We got it. We use this one there right here. That's cool. Use that one right there. Watch this. The dollar bill. The front with the front map right here. Yeah, I think we grabbed the wrong sign. That's fine. That's fine. I can still explain it. So now, when you look at this sign right here, right? Oh, hold up for a when, when you look at this sign right here, they took us from Sierra Leone. They took us from Senegal, Uganda, uh -huh. Mozambique, so on and so forth. They brought us over here through, the, uh, through what's called the Middle Passage. And that's how we came to the Americas on slave ships. God left it as a sign in the Bible to show who his chosen people, chosen people was. Because I ask you a question. The Jewish man that lives in Israel today, did his forefathers ever go into slavery on slave ships? Forefathers? Yeah. Yeah, if they had to come back to that land. No, they never did. You know why? Because they're from Poland. They're from Czech, Czechoslovakia, about the Khazars, the the right? I thought yeah. You were talking about the real Jews. Oh, the real Jews, us. Yeah. yeah we went into slavery on slave ships. That's our that's our history. 1619 transatlantic slave trade. But the the men that they call Jews today, Jewish, which is a religion, they are converts. They are Khazars, like you mentioned. They come from the Khazarian Empire. They're Ottoman Turkish people. You see what I'm saying? So they come from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's why we call them what? Caucasian. So we, we descend from the true Israelites, Moses, Christ, Isaiah, Jeremiah, so on and so forth. So what the brother is showing you, put that down. So what the brother was trying to show you, or is showing you, that we descend from those people. This is our history. You understand it? So do you understand it though? About, the, about this being our history? We the Israelites? Okay. What's your question? I understand the concept. Uh, about Egypt being a place of bondage right. or, you know. So it has nothing to do with the physical. Is that correct? Or you mean Egypt? Yes, uh -huh. the, the word Egypt, right, uh -huh. it has a certain meaning, right? 
The word Egypt has a certain meaning. That's what God was saying. Okay. I'm going to send you into Egypt again. Can I make it a little bit more clear with one more scripture? I, I want to follow you. Please. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Revelation. Okay. So, with uh, coming from Egypt, it wasn't going back a second time to the physical place. Right. So, we know that the physical is out of that. Right, 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 right. So, not only black people go through struggles. And That's right. We got Yemeni, we got, uh, well, I think that map, we got Yemeni, we have Yemen, right. Ethiopia, some, right. uh, and there's a war going on over there, right? That's right. Now. That's right. And is they not traveling by the same thing to get to places like Egypt, Israel, and places like that? Well, let me ask, can I ask you one more question? Go ahead. What's the Suez Canal? You know what that is? Uh, no, I'm not. The Suez Canal is when the white man during the 1850s, he took, he took 10 years to create a gap between Egypt and Israel. Because remember, our forefathers walked from Egypt, crossed over Jordan, and walked into Israel, right? They crossed over Jordan after they left Egypt, and then they walked into the land of Israel. So back then, you could physically walk from Egypt to Israel. No, they, I'm saying they passed over to Jordan when they came back around the opposite side. But at first, they walked from Egypt into the land of Israel. So I'm showing you that Egypt and Israel were both part of Africa. That's right. The white man made That's the Middle East. You ever heard of the Suez Canal? That was the Red Sea that they crossed. They crossed over the Red Sea. Then they crossed over Jordan too later on. You see what I'm saying? So but walked. when they crossed over the Red Sea, the Most High did that so they could come out into the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is there was not a body of water separating Egypt and Israel at that time. You understand that? Uh -huh. So the Suez Canal was created, right? to separate Egypt from Israel to create what today is called the Middle East. But Israel is nothing but Northeast Africa. You see what I'm saying? Now, I want to deal with something that you said. You mentioned about other people in the world struggling, right? You have Yemenites, right? Arabs, Iranians, so on and so forth. They struggle, right? But what atrocities, Daniel 9 verse 11, what atrocities have happened to them that happened to us? Well, they all been through a slave trade. They all been through a slave trade. But what happened, what has happened worse to them that has happened to us. I would say this, that everybody in the world today uh, that's not believers of the word is under spiritual bondage and it reflects physically. This is not for a color of people, but a part of people. So, okay. I said, okay, see, now we, now we make it sense. Okay, now I'm with you. I'm going to read this scripture and I'm going to show you in the New Testament that's not true. Okay. That is mainstream Christianity. Okay. That's not the Bible. Okay? Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Watch this. This is the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Come on. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So he said all Israel have transgressed thy law. Who were the laws given to? To the children. To the children of Israel. Right? Read. Even by departing Read. that they may not obey thy voice. Read. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Now, the curses that we read, you mentioned about other people going, but those specific curses specifically happened to us. The slave ships, that didn't happen to everybody. Everybody go to bondage, 1619 translated slave trade. That happened to us, that's right? True. So that's a specific curse that specifically happened to us uh -huh. that we read in the Bible that God said would happen to his people, uh -huh. right? So that's what we're making it specific, right? So God's making it specific. The curse is poured out on us. He didn't mention everybody in this particular past. So I got one question. Can I, can I finish this for you real quick? Hold that question. I don't want, because you got good questions. Watch this. Read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. Hold on. He's saying the oath that was written in the law of Moses. What was that oath? Uh, to talking about to Abraham that I will uh, bless your seeds. No, no, no. Uh, the oath is, watch this. Deuteronomy 11, 26. Let me give him the oath real quick. And we'll come right back. We'll come right back. All right. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. Here's the oath. Watch this. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verse 26. This is the oath that was written in the book in the law of Moses. Watch this. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. You see, I keep going back to the curse. He's talking to the Israelites because Deuteronomy was written to who? The children of Israel, right? In Jordan. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. So he said, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Watch this. Read. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. He said a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. He's still being specific. He said the Lord your God, meaning the Israelites' God, not everybody's. Watch this, read. Which I command, thee, command you this day in a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods. Which ye have not known. So that was the oath. 
if we did the, the, the commandments, we would be blessed, prosperous nation. But as you can see, we didn't do the commandments because we are an oppressed nation, the most oppressed nation on the earth. That's why he said the curse is poured off upon you from the oath that was written in the law of Moses. That's the oath right there, specifically to us. Remember, one more thing. Deuteronomy, I mean, go back to Daniel 9 and read verse 12 now. Read. Verse 12. And he had confirmed his word. Did God confirm his words that we would go on slave ships and be sold on auction blocks? He said we go back into slavery, right? Right. On ships. So he confirmed that. To Egypt. Right, right, right. It, no, you, you get stuck on Egypt. Egypt is talking about subliminally. It's a place of bondage, right. which is America today. You understand? Well, oh, and not only America, the Caribbeans, the, the, the Mexico, South America, those are all places of bondage. I disagree with that. Uh, what, what do you, so we're not enslaved in America? Yes, but we are enslaved within ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. It's not an America thing. It's not an Africa thing. What, does America teach us we're the Israelites? Uh, no, they do not. <laughs> so we in slavery. The they, keep us, the they keep us specifically in bondage. You know why? Because they tell us we African-American. That's bondage. Because as long as I think I'm African-American, I don't know my customs. I don't know my culture. So therefore, God's curse is still on me because I'm not doing right by God because I don't know where I'm from. That's, so that's spiritual bondage. So I got a question. You see what I'm saying? All right. The children of Israel. Israel, he who prevailed with God. Right. The prince that has power with God. Right. Uh -huh, yeah, they will prevail with God. Right. This has no color for every man that has Jehovah. Say it again. This has no color for every man that has Jehovah. Where can I read that? Well, when Moses went to him with the burning bush, right. he asked him, what is your name? Right. You know, so he told him, I am that I am. Right. Well, in Hebrew, that would be Jehovah. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. I'm with you on the name. Uh -huh. I ain't worried about that. Okay. And Jehovah being the self existent or eternal God. The self existent or eternal God. That's right. So, with every individual, regardless of the color, has an opportunity to access what's inside. See, with faith. That is Christianity. And that's why I wanted to keep reading the scripture. Because I'm with you. That is what we have learned. But can I show you in the Bible that's not true? Yeah. Can I show you in the Bible that's not true? Okay, let me finish this scripture. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the New Testament and show you okay. that that's mainstream Christianity. Okay. Watch this, read. Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. And he has confirmed his word, which he spake against us. So these words are the curses. He confirmed them. We went on slave ships. We had to pick cotton. We were forced to take, have our names taken from us. That all happened to us. Watch this, read. And against our judges. Because look, the Yemenite man knows that he's a Yemenite. The Arabian man knows that he's from Arabia. The Iranians or the Carmanians is what the Bible calls them. They know who they are. We are the only people walking around here like zombies that don't know who we are. Right. So therefore, God's word has been confirmed. What he said would happen to us, that we would fall, has this. happened. Now, that it happened to everyone. Right? Now watch this, read. By bringing upon us a great evil. God brought upon us a great evil. You know what a great evil is? Being shot down by police officers and nobody go to jail. That's right. a great evil. Right. P picking cotton and making this country the greatest country on the planet Earth and then being told to pull up your bootstraps, that's a great evil. Right. You understand? I Keep reading. I, For, I, know, I know you got a question. But let me, let me, let me, kind of let me just give me a minute. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to build up to something. Watch this, read. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. He said, out of the whole heaven, Jerusalem was a people before it was a place, right? right? He said, out of the whole heaven, the things that have been done to Jerusalem have not been done to all nations. Right. Now watch this. This right here, we'll use the northern kingdom of Israel, right? These are the, the so-called Hispanics, right? Look at some of the things that happened to them. They were cut, they were hung by 13s. You know what this 13 symbolizes? The 12 disciples and Jesus Christ, right? right? That's what they did to him. The, the Jesuit priest, when they came with this man named Anawapu, he is an Asherite, or what we call today a Colombian, right? He was a king. The Jesuit priest strapped him to a tree and was getting ready to burn him if we didn't follow white Jesus and follow Christianity. Right. This is the history that happened to our people. This is a great evil that has not been done to anyone else on the planet Earth. This has only happened to us. They would throw our babies and our children into to, to, uh, pits that had pitchforks coming out of it. To, to, to make us pierce through our bodies. So this all happened to a great people, yokes of bondage, iron around our neck. This happened to us, God has confirmed his words. Everything God said we was ha ha would happen to us, it was prophecy, it became history. Right. And no other nation went through that. So, now, go to the New Testament now, Acts chapter five, verse 31. Bring it up. Bring it so up. I'm with you, bro. I, I understand your I concept. about and I, certain verses that you're reading at the same time, too. So okay, you can. What, what was your question you know about the, the scripture we just read? Uh, like Daniel 9. Okay, about uh, when you were showing me all the pictures of yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, going through bondage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Egypt was the only thing that attached us to a location of land. Egypt. What do you mean? Like, for example, we know that it's a place of bondage, but if we do, if we utilize it like that instead of a land area, then Egypt is the only thing attached it to black people. When did the Israelites go into Egypt again after we went out? When did we go again? Do you know? Uh, the only, I don't remember. The only time I remember hearing about someone going to Egypt was during the time of Jesus. Right. When, when, but he went there to hide. He didn't go there for slavery. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? After that, I never so heard the, about going back. Right. So the Israelites never went back into the physical land of Egypt. That's correct. You understand the Bible is written, some of the Bible is written in parables. Right. right. So God has given a parable about, he said, I'm going to send you into Egypt mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave a sign for you. Uh -huh. So when you pull out your dollar bill and you see that pyramid on the back of your dollar bill, when you're coming up 55, coming from Madison into Jackson and you That's see that right. obelisk, God is showing you that we are in spiritual Egypt today. Yes, right. Spiritual yes, right. bondage. Right. Okay. right? Now, I want to show you something in the New Testament because you mentioned, you mentioned about anybody that accepts Christ, the faith of Christ, or Yahuwah in their heart, they can be brought. I want to understand brought. Egypt before we go farther. Right, but I gave you the understanding of Egypt. I'll show you this. Uh, Revelation 11 and 8. Bring it up. I apologize. That's okay. That's I'm okay. I'm losing my train of thought. Like That's okay. Bouncing around right. because I pay attention to detail. Right. So with Egypt, I was finna ask the question before we go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I ask. get out of first grade. To go. I got to get out Understood. of first grade. Understood. 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 All right. If Egypt is actually a, a spiritual place, what made it physical from the start? Like, why did you use the physical in one part and then use something spiritual in the other part instead of using something spiritual on both parts? Watch. That's what it truly means. Okay, I'll show you this. Give me Psalms chapter 78, verse 1. I'll show you. I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to show you Egypt. I'm, I'm going I'm to get into the root of Egypt because I see it's something that you get hung up on because you're seeing that it was a land mask at one time. It was physical, and now explain. it's spiritual. That's what you explained. And, and that's what I'm going to show it. I'm going to show you that that's why it's like that. Now watch this. Read. Psalm chapter 78, verse 1. Watch this. Give ear, O my people, to my love, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So to understand God's Bible, you must give ear to his laws. He got commandments that he wants us to follow, like fringes. These fringes, you see we all wear fringes on the board of our garments. That is a commandment that God has given his people, and that's how we fully understand the Bible, because we do what he says. This is a spiritual book. You know what I'm saying? We can read. That's why many people read it from Genesis to Revelation, and they don't fully get the understanding, because they don't, they don't apply what it says. Now, keep reading. Verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. He said, I'm going to open my mouth in a parable. Read. I will utter dark sayings of old. He said, I'm going to utter dark sayings of old. Watch this, read. Which... We have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. He said, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Watch this part, read. We will not hide them from their children. So we won't hide them from our children. But that's what we have not learned. We don't know to pass down the proper things to our children. You know why? Because we have fully learned the dark parables of God. Right. Now, I'm going to show you the physical, and then I'm going to show you the spiritual real quick. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 1. Thank you, bro. Exodus 1 verse 1. This is the physical, and then I'm going to show you the spiritual aspect. All right, read. Ezra chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Now he's talking about physical, right? The children of Israel went down where? They left the land of Canaan and they went down into Egypt, right? Remember Joseph came? Remember they met Joseph? When well, you read that in the book of Genesis, right? They went down, there was a famine in the land, they met Joseph. Joseph was the viceroy of the uh, land of Egypt at that time under, uh, was it Ramses II, I believe? No, not Ramses II. He was up under the uh, the 17th dynasty of Egypt, right? So this was physical. They went down in there physical, right? Go ahead. Spiritually also, right? No, they went down physical at this time. This is when they left the land of Canaan and went into the land of Egypt physically. Right. They became slaves in the land of Egypt, right, right or wrong? They did, right? So that's talking about physical. Now, today, we bring it up to today now, right? How are we spiritually in Egypt? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. One more time. No, he wasn't talking about spiritual in that. No, that was, that was physical. They physically went into the land of Egypt, and there they became slaves. Right. Is it possible for that to be a parable? No. Because in that's, it's plain. It's history. It's historic. You right. can go and look at the hieroglyphics. When you look at the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, they had black slaves. Right. Who were those black slaves? Israelites. Right. So the Bible and ancient history line up perfectly. That's right. So they went into Egypt physically and became right. slaves there. Right. Now, the spiritual aspect is what we kind of hung up on. And I'm going to show you what he's talking about spiritually now. Deuteronomy 28 and 68, one more time. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again 
with you. Now he uses the word Egypt, but he said this time you, you might not you might not lighten up real quick. Oh yeah, go ahead. Because because I can't. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Wisdom can't fully enter when you're doing that. Right, you see what I'm saying? So the Bible says. Deuteronomy 28, 6, they say, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he said Egypt again, meaning bondage again, but this time with slave ships. Right. You don't need a boat to go from Israel into Egypt. That wasn't created until the 1850s. You understand that? Before that, you walked from Egypt to Israel. So now he's speaking of a spiritual Egypt, and we're going to show you that it's spiritual. Right. But first, let me finish the scripture. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ship. Transatlantic slave trade. We agree on that, right? 1619, transatlantic slave trade. It's physical too. It's, it's, it's physical in the sense that we went there, but the land that he's talking about is not going to be called Egypt. It's going to be called something else. He's spiritually saying it's going to be Egypt. I ain't got to that scripture okay, yet. Okay. That's the head buster. Okay, I'm going to throw that thing I, at the end, right? I'm going to throw the log. I'm throwing the log right now, and you sprinting from half court going to catch it. Okay, okay watch this. Read. By the way whereof I used to play basketball, so I had a basketball yeah. turn. <laughs> Read. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, Read. thou shalt see it no more again. So we hadn't seen our homeland again, right? Read. And there. And when we got all the slave ships in this particular Egypt that he's speaking of, Read. You should be sold unto your enemy. So we didn't go into Egypt on slave ships again to get sold our enemy. So that's how you know he's talking about a spiritual Egypt. But we're going to show you. Read. For by men and by women, and no man shall buy you. Meaning no man would redeem us, right? We went into slavery on slave ships, was brought to America, and there we were sold to our enemies, bond men and bond women, and no man was able to redeem us. Right. Now let's go to the New Testament, because remember, the Bible is a puzzle. Remember when you read Isaiah 28, he said, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little. There a little. So it's something in Exodus that precepts with Revelation. Something in Revelation that matches up with Matthew. We got to go and find it. Watch this. This is the scripture right here. This is the spiritual Egypt. Revelation 11 and 8. You got it? Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Now we're going to get the full understanding of what he meant. Watch this. And I'm going to give you the understanding. Read. There's a book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Come on, bro. And their dead bodies shall, live, shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. He said our dead bodies will lie in the streets. Now he's not talking about physically dead. Watch this. Proverbs, you all want, 21, 16. He's not talking about spiritually, he's not talking about physically dead. He's right. talking about spiritually dead. Right. We're gonna show you what it, watch this. Proverbs 21, verse 16. That's why the Bible yeah. must be taught the proper way. Right. Precept upon precept. Watch this. Proverbs 21, 16. You got it? Yeah. Read. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. Come on with it. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding. The way of understanding is what? The Bible. God's laws. He said the man that wanders out of the way of the Bible, he goes into Islam. He goes into Egyptology. He goes in all these different facets, right. but he leaves this. Read. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We are, con we are in the congregation of the dead. Not physically, we're spiritually dead. We don't know who we are. We don't know our customs. We don't know our language. We don't know what we used to eat. We don't know any of those things. Without the Bible, without following the Bible, we wouldn't know anything about our history. Right? Now go back to Revelation. Now you're going to understand Revelation now. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Don't leave it, bro. Stay there. Revelation 11 verse 8. Watch this. There's the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. Yeah. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So now he said their dead bodies, meaning spiritually dead. Because we wandered out of the way of understanding. We lost our heritage, our culture. Right. So today in America, we are spiritually dead. Right. And that place is a great city. Right. So they gonna, their body going to lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually, now he's talking about spiritual now. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Why is this place spiritually called Sodom? Because people have to find out the meaning of Sodom and Gomorrah. Homosexuality was legalized here. Yes. Transgenderism was legalized. Bring it out. Here. That's why the Bible says this is spiritual Sodom. This is the first place on earth that legalized homosexuality. You right. Know? Bring it out. See, the reason why I disagree with that. You disagree with the Bible now? Because no, you pointed at the Bible. I disagree with your point of view. Wow. Yeah. I, we could go in the Bible and that, because they ain't. You got to show me a scripture that, that says okay. different. Okay. Well, uh, that'll be the book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 12. Let's finish this, and then we're going to go to John 3 and 12. Read it again. Revelation, chapter. My brother right here, you listening? You kind of paying attention a little bit? He out of here. He ain't listening. It's all good, bro. It's all good. It's all good, bro. 
Okay, I'll praise, I'll praise. I'm just trying to bring you into the conversation because we're here to teach our people. That's why I'm trying to bring you in, right? Come on. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Watch this. In their dead bodies. Spiritually dead. Read. Shall lie in the street of the great city. Our bodies are lying in the street of the great city. Our young men are dead. Our young women are dead. Mentally. Teach out. Read. Which, spiritually, is called Sodom. So this is not the true Sodom. It's a spiritual Sodom. The place where homosexuality was legalized in 2016 by Barack Obama. Read. And Egypt. Where is this place going to be called? And Egypt. So when you pull out that dollar bill, you see the pyramids. God is leaving you a sign to let you know you are in spiritually Sodom and Egypt. That's now, right. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Christ's image crucified? Because is this Christ? I want to consider that him before right. I consider the... Right, because the Bible says he's a man of man of color. Right. So he spiritually has been sodomized, spiritually has been destroyed, spiritually has been crucified here in America. Right. This is where they push the image the most. This is where Passion of the Christ was made. It was made here. Right. This is where the uh, Ten Commandments was made. It was made and published here. You see what I'm saying? So they spiritually crucified him. You understand? His image, his, uh, his uh, ideology, his doctrine. And it says to lie in the street. Right. What that mean then? That mean we walking around dead. Like, look at our young men. Look at our brothers. And these are my brothers and sisters. I love them. But we walk. mean walk. This Just attention to detail. We got to be honest about that part. Attention to the detail. Did we just go over about the dark sayings and parables? Uh -huh. So That's the right. word lie is not the Lord lie like me and you. Like, we're going to lay down. But I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a scripture real quick. Can I give you one more scripture? Yeah. Uh -huh. Isaiah 51 verse 10. Bring it out. I'm going to show you what it means spiritually. We're going to lie in the streets. Watch what he mean. 51 verse 20. Bring it out. Isaiah 51 verse 20. You were just there. Bring it out, huh? Here we go. Isaiah 51 verse 20. You got it? I, Read. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. God Thy sons have fainted. God said our sons have fainted. They spiritually did. Our sons have fainted. Read. Meaning lost consciousness of who they are. Read. Uh -huh. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Uh, do our young men lie down at the head of all the streets? No. Oh, they on the corner out. selling drugs. That's right. right. The game bank. Right. right. The corner hating their brother. Right. That's what that. That's what the scripture is talking about. They lie at the head of all the street, meaning they always at the head. So the word lie that you're thinking of, like lie down, is not what the Bible's speaking of. Right. Meaning we are spiritually we are, and physically at the head of the streets. Right. You understand? I'm going to read it again. Read it again for them. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Come on. The sons are fainted. Thy sons are fainted. Thy sons are fainted. That lie at the head of all the streets. Read. As a wild bull in a net. Does a wild bull lay down in a net? No. When you put a net on, he do what? He buck. That's why our people gangbang and shoot, drug dealing. Bring it up. We in a trap. God said we are in a trap. What they call the hood? The trap. That's right. That's right. right. Telling us we are spiritually and physically and mentally in a trap. Right. right. God is calling us. Right. So that's why when he said lie in the head of all the streets, the bottom part of the precept show you he's not talking about laying down because a wild bull can't lay down in the neck. Right. right. He buck. He's standing up. He bucking. You understand? That's what the Bible is talking about. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> now that would be strictly perception. And the reason why I disagree with Are we at the corner of the street? Are we at the corner of all the street? Are we gang banging drug dealing on the corner, selling drugs on the corner? Yes, people do. So the Bible is real. Right. right. I'm right. not saying that that's not real. I'm saying that you're not uh, saying it right. How you know I ain't saying it right? Well, let's go to the book, and then maybe we can get the book. Okay, wait, where in the book we going? All right, well, first we'll go to who revealed the mysteries. John chapter 3, verse 12. Let's read it. John chapter 3, verse 12. And it's going to prove to me that the lie ahead of all the streets is not what I'm saying it is. No, because we had many more subjects before that. It just kept going. And, okay. You know. So this is going to prove that we about, dead, spiritually dead. No, about. The, what's this going to prove? About being able to discern what's spiritually and what's physically. Instead okay. Of that this is physical, but this is not. Okay. But you can't disagree with anything I said as far as us being on the corners of the street. You can't disagree with I that. Agree that with, I agree. That's I agree. what we are. So we agree on that. Yeah, because there's many nations, many right. people. Right. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the black man. I agree with that. Okay, I'll press. <laughs> you stay. We together. All right, come on. John 3 and 12. If you build John to the 3 and verse 12. Right if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, Rick. how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Okay. And, 
Alright, now that was the first thing. Right, so t break that down for me. Okay, well, in that chapter, Nicodemus, a Pharisee, That's right. you know, came to Jesus by night. Right. Questioning him, he said, well, I know that you have to be a man of God. You got to no be, man to right. things that you do, right. does God be with him? Right. So Jesus tried explaining something to him about being born again. That's right. Nicodemus couldn't comprehend it. Right. He was thinking physically. Right. Well, what, can a man go into his mother's womb? Right, 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 right. I'm so with you, I'm with you. Jesus breaking down and saying, no, you must be born of water. Okay. Yeah, born of a woman and born of a new kind. Wait, 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 wait. What does water and spirit mean? Well, for in the Bible, biblically, not not me and your perception, because everything we've been going over, it hasn't been my own words. It's been the Bible. Right. And interpreting it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So can I interpret water and spirit for you real fast? Yes. Yeah, okay, right. I'll praise it. Ephesians 5 26. Bring it up. What the water he's talking about. Read. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. You see what the water is? It's the word of God. Right. So he's telling right. the demons, go back and learn the word of God. Yes, go right. back and read of me in Isaiah. Yeah. Go back and read of me in Psalms and you'll see I've been the man. Yes, right. I've been here. Right. Now, now i got to show you spirit. Real quick, spirit. Uh, John 6 and 63. Bring it up. Bring it up. Like you were just talking about. John 6, 63. Here's the spirit. So the water is the word. We got to be washed by the word, meaning we got to submit to the word of God. Right? right? The second thing is the spirit. Let's see what the spirit is. Read. This is the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profiteth nothing. So sin don't profit us. It's the spirit that quickens, meaning make you alive, make you born again. Read. The words that I speak unto you. Christ said the words that I'm speaking to you right now. Read. They are spirit. What are they? They are spirit. What are they? They are spirit. He said the words I'm talking to you, that's the spirit. That's right. Read. And they are life. And that's how you live. You understand? Right. So that's what he was telling Nicodemus. Well, so I want to I want to break that scripture down. I want to go back to John 3 and 12. Because okay. you don't have to full understand. And it's okay that well, you don't. We go back a couple verses before. To John 3 and 12. Explain what water and the spirit mean. In John 3, verse 9. John 3, verse, I, let's try 5 or 6. All right. right. Let's go to John chapter 3. Let's read verse, uh, it is going to be verse, I think it was verse 9 what I said. No, it's verse, where you at? You at John 3? Oh yeah, verse five. Yeah, this is uh, the book of John, chapter uh, three and verse five. Now this is the scripture you quoted. I wouldn't have interpreted, it, but now we're gonna read it. But you quoted it earlier. Yeah. The water and the spirit, right? Read. Jesus answered, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit." What was the water and the spirit? The water was of a physical life. Huh? This was for the physical life. Come into the world, come into the physical world first. What, what scripture proves that? Because the scripture I just read proved that it was talking about the Bible, Nic talking about the Word of God. Nicodemus asked him, he said, What? Can a man go into his mother's womb a second time? So Jesus had to break it down for him physically, because parable, tell him a story, something physically. Then I'm going to tell you about the spiritual, if you comprehend the, uh, the physical. Where did, where, I'm trying to see what Christ said, that what Christ said that was talking about physical. Well, we continue to read. Okay, we'll keep reading. We'll keep reading. All right. Very, very, I send to thee, and if a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter to the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What does that mean? That was the explanation about the water and the spirit. He only spoke on two. He says spirit is spirit. That don't explain what spirit is. Yes. But we went to in John explain what spirit was, the word of God. He right. said that which is born of flesh is flesh. Okay. So to speak on something physical, why would he speak on it? Right. Unless he was explaining it to a man that only understood the physical. Because because Nicodemus said what before that? He, he said, said, can a man go into his mother's womb again? Uh, what was Christ speaking of? What does it mean to be born again? To be born again is a new conscience and understanding that word after we've been lived it wrong the whole time. Okay, all praise. Now we somewhat. Now we, now we, now I feel me and you connected. Right. Acts 319. Let me show you what it means to be born again. Bring it up. show you what it means to be born again. Because what you're saying is, is somewhat of the truth, right? But it's not, you got to go into the Bible to show people. Remember the Bible says, my word going to stand. Uh -huh. Remember, remember the Lord said, speak my words gonna, unto them. We're going to use but, our scripture. But what, but what we just went over in John 3 and 5, mm -hmm. what you said, didn't explain it. When I went to the scripture to show you what water and spirit was, precept upon precept, that explained it. Mm -hmm. Jesus just explained it in the verse after. If but you didn't explain what flesh meant and what spirit meant. You didn't explain it. Flesh is the physical life, Adam. No, let me show you. Galatians 3, Galatians 5, 19. Bring it out. That's why he said the, it's the spirit that quickeneth, meaning it makes you born again. Mm -hmm. 
Flesh profiteth nothing, many sin. Flesh is talking about sin, not you born out your mama's womb. It's talking about sin. And let me show you that. Galatians 5 and 19. This is the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now you're talking about the flesh, right? That's the subject matter. The works of the flesh are manifest, meaning easily seen. He's going to give you an explanation. Read. Which are these? Adultery. Adultery is a part of the flesh. That's what Christ was speaking of. Read. Fornication. Fornication is of the flesh. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Uh, lustful desires. Strong sexual desires. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. Read. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is of the flesh. Read. Hatred. Read. Variance. Emulation. Wrath. Strife. Sedition. Heresy. For all these are of the flesh. You with me, right? Read. Envying. Envying. Murder. Murder. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Reveling. Read. And such like. Of the which I tell you the part. before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things. Which you, you do those things that are of the flesh, the murder, the adultery, the homosexual, whatever it is, the sin, right? Read. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what Christ was speaking of. He was talking about flesh, meaning you stay in your sin. Now you got to come out of your sin and be washed by the word of God. Right. That's what it's talking about. So, if this is so, because it's so because that's what we just read. Well, that's that's what Jesus said. Yes, it is. Go back to John 3. And, watch this. Go back to John 3 and 3. And we're going to show you that's exactly what Christ said. Yeah. Bring it up. John chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, and shall a man be born again, he cannot See the kingdom of God. Now what we just read in Galatians showed the works of the flesh that'll keep you out of the kingdom of God. So that's what he's speaking of. You got to be born again. You got to stop sinning. You got to be reborn. You see what I'm saying? Now we own it. So that's what Christ was speaking of. It, hold up, hold up. It wasn't talking about coming out of your mama's womb. It wasn't talking about what you said. It was talking about keeping the commandments and not keeping the commandments. Right. 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 Is Jesus explaining the physical life and the spiritual life to Nicodemus? No, that's not what he's saying. He's telling him to be born again, change his life. So how can Nicodemus comprehend this if he can't understand the physical? Because in verse 12, he said, if I tell you earthly things that you believe, not how should you believe if I tell you You know, you, you know how you just cut yourself? You said if you speak earthly things, he was talking about the physical flesh. Bring it up. He's talking about spiritual. He said, I can't tell you what's going on in the heavens so if you can't even understand to come out of your sin. Right. So when Nicodemus right. didn't understand the spiritual, <laughs> right? He didn't even understand the physical. That's why Christ said, I can't even talk to you about the physical because you're in your sin. After he explained to him the physical and the spirit. Guess what he guess what that it was? The water and the spirit, right? The water was what? Watched by the word? The spirit was what? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high right. God. That's now true. let me ask you a question. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark. Oh God. First John three and first John three and four. Bring it up. I love you, bro, and I'm just dealing with you as my brother. Mainstream Christianity is what you're thinking. Right. That's right. It's not biblical. And it's because it's mainstream Christianity. Because a lot of the scriptures that we brought out to you tonight today, you've never heard. Honestly. You've never heard them brought out this way. So that shows you that what you have been learning has not been the full truth. Right. Let me show you this. Let me just show you this. Because you said sin was missing the mark. Uh -huh. I'm going to go into the Bible to show you what sin is. Right. Okay, read. Verse John chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. Whosoever committed sin. Said, whosoever committed sin. Read. Transgressive also the law. When you sin, you transgress or break God's laws. Uh -huh. Read. Yeah. For sin is the transgression. I'll uh -huh. read that with some emphasis. For sin. For sin is the transgression of the law. It's a two-letter word in there. I-S. I want you to put emphasis on that. For sin. For sin is the transgression of the okay. law. So, so that's the explanation. Break it. When you break or you transgress God's laws. Uh -huh. Like for instance, let me show you something. First Corinthians 11 and 3. Bring it out. 
No, no, I'm not running. I'm about to show you a sin that if you love God, you will change about yourself right now. Bring it out, Rob. When I say transgress, when I say Mr. Mark, that's just like saying, uh, brother. That ain't biblical. Up, pick up the leaf. Nah, this is just my level of comprehension in the words. That's why we're telling you to humble down. But then that's so you can understand. Then, but with English, this is not the original language. Oh, God. This is, but we so what does transgress that? mean? That's what I was asking you because it's it means lies. break. Right. Well, you, if you transgress America's laws and run that red light, you broke the law of running right. the red light. Right. That's the same thing God is saying. So when God say do, and we do opposite. That's a transgression. Okay, that's so, sin. So that's what breaking. I, was saying, I agree with you 100% because I missed that mark. This was my words. I apologize if I didn't say it verbatim how the Bible. But that, well, how does the Bible tell us to speak? In Hebrew, if we get the real. First word, Peter 4 and 11. First of all, the New Testament wasn't written in Hebrew, it was written in Greek and Latin. Bring Second it out. All, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and it, in the day we don't have that Hebrew. The Hebrew that we have today, which is Yiddish, right. a conglomerate of Yiddish, German, French, and English, mm -hmm. and Latin, it's a conglomerate of a whole bunch of different languages. That was started by a white man named Eleazar ben Yehuda. He changed the Hebrew from the ancient. So watch this, read. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11. That's why I say you got to learn the word and speak the word. You can't right. speak your own, right? Come on. If any man speak, if anybody speak, if I speak to anybody out here, read. Let him speak as the oracle of God. I got to speak what God says, not me. That's right. why when I asked you what sin was, you said, Mr. Mark, I had to correct you because that's not biblical. The Bible says, 1 John 3 and 4, if you break God's laws or transgress God's laws, that's sin. Right. We got to go what God says. You corrected me with English translation of a transliteration. What does that mean? That is not the original. So if I if I kill him, is that breaking God's laws? By action, yes. So that's sin. Uh huh. So yes. you just you just explain what I said. What First, here hit this lemon three. Watch this. Bring it up. You love God. Yes. My God said, if you love him, keep the commandments, right? Uh huh. All right. Watch this. Bring it up. First, Transliterate. Read. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. You believe that? And the head of the woman. It's the man. You believe that? That the head of the woman is the man? The man will be the head of the household? That was written in Greek. That was the same thing John wrote it in. Mm -hmm. What's the transliteration on that? Well, this is the thing. You agree with that, though? Yes, I agree by action. I agree by action. In other words, but that's not the topic about the language that it was given in. You brought that up. Except by you correcting me with the English language instead of a Hebrew language that has the true meaning of it. Brother. The New Testament was written in Greek, it wasn't written in Hebrew. So even if I told you it in Hebrew, you wouldn't understand it. So the thing is... Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Barak What did I just say? Say it again. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Barak The first word is Jehovah Salvation. What was the rest that you said? Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Barak What did I just say? Well, it sounded like the beginning of something. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand hey, Hebrew. Wait, what's uh, what? You, I know you. So you don't understand Hebrew. So what I got to speak to you in? You don't understand Hebrew. So what do I have to speak to you in? Because you my brother. What do I have to relate to you in? English. That's right. right. So let's get past that. Let's finish this out. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, right. and the head of the woman is the man, right. and the head of Christ is God. You believe that God answers? To, I mean, Christ answered to God, right? Okay. Watch this. Read. Every man praying. All prophesy. It's every man that's in the midst of prophecy, meaning they hearing the word or they're praying. Read. Having his head covered. And they have their head covered. Their head is covered. Read. This honor his head. What does that mean? Read it again. I'll read for you. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Any man that's hearing the word of God or praying and his head is covered. He got a bandana on, a hat on, whatever. Read. Dishonor his head. He dishonor his head. Who is the head of every man? God. Read three again. But I have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of every man? God. Read again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who's the head of every man? Christ. Christ, Word. right? Christ, yeah. right? So when he read, when we said any man that prays or prophesy having his head covered, dishonor his head, meaning you dishonor Christ right. or Yahweh or Yahshua, whatever language you want to speak in, Hazel Christo, right? Well, if you love God, you would take that bandana off your head while you're hearing the word of God. That's right. If you love God. Right. So are you willing to take that bandana off your head? No. So you don't love God. That's right. So that's, right. Yep. that's the best, that's the misconception. You are going off of a man-made religion. We are going off the oracles that our fathers left for us in this Bible. Yeah. Hey, right. 14, 15. Bring it out. 
Watch this. John 14, 15. And hey, come on back up, son. Hold on before you go, because I got one more button. Okay, that's fine. Let me that's fine. Let me Read. Okay, I'll this is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me. This is Christ speaking. Red words. If you love me, read. Keep my commandment. He gave you a commandment to uncover your head. You said, I'm not going to do it. You can't love God if you're not doing it. You can't right. love Christ if you don't do it. Right. Then he said, while well, prophesying. What all did it say? It prophesy. said, praying or prophesying. Pray you prophesy. are in the midst of prophecy because we're speaking about Jesus Christ. Right. We are teaching you the words of Christ. Right. So you in the midst of prophecy right now. By you being in Mr. Prophecy, you are commanded by God to have your head uncovered. Because it's cold out here, and I can easily put my hoodie on. But when I'm reading the Bible, or hearing the Bible, or praying, I must honor Christ by taking my head, head off. the man that was doing that, prophesying. No, no, no. It's the man that's in the midst of it. Let me, can I give you the scripture? Uh, Revelation 19.10. Come on, so I know you can come up. Let me show you this real quick. Revelation 19, verse 10. Watch this. Watch this. Revelation 19, verse 10. But this is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So anytime we're teaching about Christ or teaching the words of Christ, right? The, because Christ is the word, like you mentioned earlier, he is the word made flesh. Anytime we're reading this Bible to you or anybody, the man must have his head uncovered. Whether they're hearing the Bible or whether they're reading it or praying. Because when you're talking about Jesus, when we're bringing out Jesus, that's the spirit of prophecy. That's, right. that's why God says uncover your head. So I ask you one more time to see if you've repented from that. Will you uncover your head while you hear the Bible because God says so? Okay. So, you're rebellious. Right? You're rebellious. And, and as long as you're rebellious, it's going to keep you out of the kingdom of God, bro. That's right. That's right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.